hi everybody um so uh, this talk is going to be about uh, this for people interested in an IT career um we're trying to i'm trying to talk to high school students and university students uh try and tell them you know how to prepare what to expect um and so on and you know what what kind of skills to build up so um i'll talk a little bit about myself uh, my name is arjunan vasiharan uh i live in uh, new jersey uh, united states um let's see uh born in uh, born in the states but uh, probably spent about the first four years of my life in uh, in jaffna uh then in colombo after that um then went to school in india uh then came to the states uh, for university uh, i think in 19 uh, 1981 um and i've been here ever since um I'm, um, I studied uh, electri electrical engineering and computer science um, and uh, probably about 20 years ago I kind of went out on my own and we started a company and then I think about 10 years ago we kind of got more serious and I, I actually started a, a firm in, uh, in South India, in, in Kerala. Um, and uh, thereafter, for, based on what we learned over there, we started something in Colombo um and uh what um we hope uh, you know uh, in the in the near future to uh, to start a, a, a group in in jaffna to to help us with our work um our work is probably about 70 80% uh, healthcare related that is uh, healthcare in the united states um and uh, outside of that you know we do things like we build mobile applications we build web applications we build something called erp systems uh, and we have clients, um, clients uh, in Sri Lanka. We have clients in uh, in India, and uh, and we have actually we have project going on in Jaffna right now, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, so uh, that's uh, very briefly. Uh, yeah, that's that's my background, and uh, a little bit that's about my company. Um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, you know what what everyone should know about IT. So I mean, today you know uh, IT is ready for everybody. Uh, even those people who don't specialize in IT. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, how to learn IT. Um, we'll talk about different IT careers. And we'll talk about, you know, is it is it ready for you? And how to get started? And then I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Okay. Uh, I already talked about this, but I basically said, yeah, this is a little brief intro about our company. Um, okay. So everyone must learn IT. So today, uh, you know, wherever you live, whether just to give an example, if you're a farmer, if you're a pilot, if you're a cook, you're a house, you're a mother, you're a tailor, you're a teacher, a scientist, you need to have good IT skills. It's a very must for whatever job you're doing, right? Um, so, so what does that mean uh, for for everyone, right? I mean, everyone needs to have these basic IT skills, right? Using a computer, a smartphone, and a lot of people are already able to do that. Uh, but, uh, you know, one needs to be very comfortable with email, one needs to be very comfortable with messaging. Uh, and I guess most young people are comfortable, but not everybody. There is, uh, you know, people do conferencing, people do calendars, uh, and a lot of people, uh, you know, especially younger people, are very comfortable making and sharing documents, obviously making and sharing videos, photos, presentations, presentations like this. Uh, so, so these are like kind of basic must-have skills for for everyone. Um, I also recommend, and I again, I have two young children, and I recommend to them, you know, you've got to have some coding skills, whether or programming skills. Uh, even if uh, you're not going to go and you know study IT, you really need to have some programming skills because you're going to need it somewhere down the road, right? And if you have it, your career is going to be uh, so much enhanced, and you'll understand better. So I always recommend to people uh, that there's a site called code.org, which anybody can go to and you can do some basic exercises. Uh, I think I had my kids do this when they were about uh, six or seven years old. So it's not terribly hard uh, and it's kind of easy to pick up. And uh, so I strongly recommend for uh, wherever you are in life, uh, go to this site called code.org, spend a few hours, maybe three hours or four hours, and uh, learn a little bit about what computer programming is about. Um, an important thing today is, you know, cybersecurity. Uh, you know, we're all on the internet and we all can be attacked uh, and we can be damaged through the internet. 
right? Uh, so I think everyone has to have a, a sort of a sense of the importance of this. Uh, here in the U.S., we see big companies being shut down um, by what they call ransomware, where some program will come in, introduce into your computer network, it will basically lock up all your data, and they will say, okay, pay us money to release it. So there's a lot of this stuff happening, and it's very costly, it's, uh, you know, it's disruptive, it's embarrassing, but uh, it can easily, it just as easily happen to you. I mean, if you're somebody who's doing some sensitive work, then it's actually not too hard to come and, you know, steal your passwords or to uh, go into your Facebook account. So you need to have a sense of this, and you need to uh, start understanding how to protect yourself. Now, this is an entire talk by itself, but I'll just, uh, you know, just leave you with a couple of thoughts, okay? One is always use strong passwords wherever you are, okay? So don't use ABC123 as a password, you know, use don't use password as a password. Use a complicated password. Uh, so that's, and don't share those passwords with your friends, okay? Uh, and then the next thing is be careful what you download or click on. You know, a lot of times, you know, we get email attachments, and they are malicious, so be check to see where they're coming from before you download it or click on. Because if uh, this is how people uh, take over your computer, they'll send you an email, and they'll you know they'll just send send it to a lot of people. They send an email and say, okay, download this word document or something, and then you download it, and then some program runs and it you know takes over your computer, and you know next thing you know people have access to all your personal information. So. Uh, Again, this is a subject by itself, but uh, very important that everybody be aware of this. Right? Um, okay. Uh, next topic would be, um, you know, everybody who does computers, you know, really the what you learn in the in the classroom is out of date after a few years, right? I mean, the fundamentals are there, but you really have to learn learn to learn by yourself, and this is, I think is probably true of most modern jobs today, right? Uh, it's, uh, you know, unless, uh, I don't know, you're doing something like, uh, uh, well, it, it, I think in most jobs today, you have to be learning by fear for yourself. You have to learn how to learn to yourself. That is, you have to go to the, uh, you know, go to the internet and you have to, or your friends, and, and pick up stuff by yourself. It's what you learn in school, what you learn in university is not going to be enough. It's never, never going to be enough. Okay. So very important that everyone have this skill. And that's an IT skill because really all the information now, uh, all the resources are on the internet. Um, for people in, uh, in Sri Lanka, you know, these English language skills are, you know, very important. Uh, time and time again, you know, I see people, graduates of uh, Sri Lankan universities, but with poor English language skills, not getting jobs. And I see, you know, uh, people who did badly at school, but with good English language skills, getting the jobs. So, uh, you know, maybe I suppose that's sort of unfair and unfortunate, but unfortunately that is a reality. So, uh, I, you know, I can't stress this enough. You know, you really have to work on your English language skills. Right? Okay. So uh, let's talk about uh, preparing for an IT career, right? Uh, that is, if you're going to get into this field. Now, um, people who have math and science skills, uh, you know, have an advantage because, you know, uh, computers, is a, I would say it's kind of mathematical. Um, so people who have math skills, science skills uh, have an advantage, right? Uh, Every now and then, or not quite frequently, you find a minority of people who have good music skills and art skills, uh, and, and they they do very well in the creative parts, of the creative IT careers. And we'll talk a little bit more about them. Uh, physics and engineering skills are probably the best. Uh, you know, probably my some of my my better people that I work with uh, tend to have like uh, electrical engineering skills or having a computer science degree. Uh, in Sri Lanka, it's, you know, you really need to have a degree to, to do this, right? Uh, for some people, you can uh, have an entry level plus a higher diploma after high school can be enough, right? Uh, but generally speaking, a, you know, a degree is a must. 
uh, certifications uh, like from companies. So companies like Cisco, Microsoft, uh, there's an organization called A+. They offer various kinds of certifications and having those certification is an added plus uh, because that's a way to demonstrate your seriousness to a prospective uh, employee. Right? Uh, and again, you know, most knowledge in, I, I, in an IT is self-taught ultimately. You know, what you learn in school is, is you know, uh, part of it, uh, what you learn in your diploma, but really you, you, you have to learn so much from by yourself. So I, I can't stress this enough. If you're not interested enough, okay, in, in the field, you will not do, you will not do well. You must have the interest. Right? Very, very important. I mean, don't get into this field. I mean, a lot of people get into the field because yeah, there's a, it's a good career, you know, I'll get a good salary or a good job. No, you get into it, that won't work. You have to be interested in it. Uh, you 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 have to kind of love it enough, and probably more than other jobs to to be uh, to do well at it. Okay, so I, I can't stress that enough. Okay, so I made a list here, and this is not a complete list. I made a list of IT careers, right? And um, I, I'll, I'll I'll talk a little bit about uh, each one, give you some sense. Okay. So uh, there's IT technician. You know what? I'm actually going to jump right to the the each uh, individual uh, description and stuff. Reading through this. So let's start with the first one. Okay. So the first one is IT technician or and or network administrator. So the IT technician uh, is the guy who installs the computers. You know, he keeps them running. You know, I guess he's the guy who plugs them in, sets up the software. If the machine is broken, he troubleshoots them. Uh, then there's a network administrator. Um, so you know every every company has a network, and that network is connected to the internet. And uh, the network administrator is the person who sets up those networks. Uh, he does the cabling. Uh, he configures the what they call the routers, which are the devices that connect the computers together. He configures the internet connection. So I would say that these are probably the some of the easier jobs in the IT career in IT. Okay, so let's get to something a little bit harder, and uh, that's the uh, the analyst and the report writer. Okay, so most companies today, or most largest companies, I would say, you know, they would have a database. They would keep their accounts in there, and uh, they would have people who would you know basically analyze the data. You know, analyze the company sales figures or uh, analyze the hours worked or look at the cost. Uh, so this is almost like an accounting function, but uh, with the emphasis on uh, on writing reports. Um, so reports means uh, it can be tables, it can be graphs, uh, and these are given to uh, people higher up uh, or other other departments in the organization, so they can understand, uh, you know, how things are working. Okay. So the database administrator. So today, uh, most companies are collecting a lot of data. Uh, so just to give an example, you guys have all have cell phones. Well, those cell phones, uh, you know, whenever you make a call, that data is recorded somewhere as to okay, this person made a call. Uh, you know, uh, you, I'm sure you. A lot of people here have uh, online banking. So there's a tremendous amount of data that's being generated by all our activities. So there'll be like sales, accounts, you know, uh, time data, you know, where your vehicle is going or where you are going, you know, uh, uh, the number of people coming into a, 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 a supermarket. So there's tremendous amounts of data being collected. And the database administrator is a person who helps to takes care of this data, right? He organizes the data, he brings it into this database, which is like a special software program to manage data. And then he exports the data to other systems uh, for use by other programs which try to understand the data and try to make some sense out of it. Okay. So uh, next one would be the cybersecurity expert. Okay. So the cybersecurity, and I, I said earlier, like, you know, uh, there's a, the internet can be a very dangerous place. Uh, and I've tried to tell you a little bit about some of the dangers. 
well, for a bigger company, you know, it's a huge risk. So they have uh, people uh, who are cyber, called cybersecurity experts, and they, I would say they're like a, a, a security guard, but uh, a security guard for, you know, your network and your software and so on. Uh, so how do they do this? Uh, first of all, they go around and they educate the workers on how to be careful. Uh, then they analyze the way the, the software that they have and, you know, make sure there are no vulnerabilities. And then they also buy software and set up software in your organization. So you're watching, you're watching for attacks, you're watching for weaknesses. Uh, so you can, uh, you know, catch them before they happen. And then sometimes, you know, uh, you can't catch them and then the cybersecurity experts have to kind of respond to this uh, intrusion. Uh, so sometimes it'll be something simple like, you know, upgrading the software in the company, uh, you know, your Windows OS, but uh, it can get very complex. So this is a, it's a big field, I think. Okay, so uh, some of you might be seeing this more. It's a, uh, it's a kind of a big word and it's a data scientist. So uh, what, what the data scientist does is uh, he is like an analyst, but he's much more sophisticated. Uh, they run specialized software called machine learning or predictive algorithms to find patterns in data, right? Uh, and then they use that to try to improve the, the company performance. And they typically work with a lot of data, right? You know, tens and thousands, sometimes millions, sometimes billions of records of data. Uh, so, uh, so this is a, by itself, this is a huge area. Uh, you know, people trying to take advantage of all the data they collected to find patterns, which could uh, point them towards new business areas or to um, make the existing business areas more efficient. Okay. Um, so every company, well, every decent sized company will have some sort of an IT manager, right? And uh, he uh, will be the person who understands business uh, but he will also understand computers and he will help the company to, uh, you know, tell the company, okay, what to buy, you know, how to, what kind of data to collect, uh, you know, if there are uh, software that needs to be developed in-house, uh, he will have a project manager who will be responsible for, uh, for, uh, for, for installing this software or programming this software with the help of other people internally and externally. Uh, so typically, uh, you know, most of you in most companies, you'll be working with an IT or project manager. Now, uh, if you are doing programming and you are developing new types of software, new new programs, then one career that people is needed is the the test and quality assurance engineer, and these are the people who work with people who develop new programs and they will basically test the software, right? They will see, is this software working as expected? Is it fast enough? Is it easy to use? So what I, a lot of things that we do in our company is that we, we, we sort of uh, expand or we build new software. So we do a lot of this kind of test QA work. Uh, and, uh, you know, for some, some people see it's boring, uh, but then we also automate a lot of the work that we do and it's a uh, it's much needed so uh, again it's a, it's i think it's a good area to get into okay so these are now i'm talking about computer programmers web developers mobile developers so these are the people who actually program the computers right um, so uh, you, you know you, you are guys all using zoom right now and that's something on the web so there's programmers who built that software uh, for those of you, most of you probably have a smartphone and you have lots of apps over there. Uh, we have people who program those apps. Okay, now these, this is kind of technically challenging and probably technically the kind of the harder area. Uh, I guess this area and the area of data science is probably the harder areas uh, to the harder careers. Uh, but also, you know, uh, probably the most in demand. In, you know? So, uh, uh, this is uh, something, some things you can do, okay? Uh, so for, in my case, you know, I have, I work with a lot of people who do exactly this, right? Okay, so on the creative side, right? Uh, for people who are good at, uh, good at art and 
uh, good at graphics. Uh, you know, we you need you need people called UX designers or user interface designers, uh, people who are called animators. So you will see uh, on some of the programs uh, that you work with, uh, or maybe on the TV, you will see animations. Uh, you will see uh, uh, most of the web pages you go go into. Uh, there will there will be somebody called a UX the user interface designer who will kind of decide, you know, what what uh, sort of piece of information should be put in which area of the screen. Uh, so basically, how to get people to interact with the programs in an efficient way. This is more art than science. Right? It has to do with colors, it has to do with where you place things on a screen or on a device. So uh, this is more for the creative types. And uh, it's, uh, again, it's, uh, I'm sure there are people out there who will find this uh, very interesting. Okay, uh, then there's the people who develop games. So games are like the computer programmers. Uh, but uh, games actually can be very challenging. And they're probably the, maybe the hardest area in some ways, uh, uh, technically. Uh, and they also games also require you know a creative input, right? Uh, you have to decide what type of game to build, you know what what figures to put there, how to animate them. So it's a very challenging area. Uh, and uh, today, a lot of apps that you see that you work with, are actually they they borrow ideas from games. Uh, because they uh, games are much better at uh, engaging people, so uh, the, the business apps try to use some of those concepts to keep people engaged and to use uh, use their software. Okay, um, so this area is called DevOps and cloud engineering. So uh, a lot of the computers that we use today are, are not, you know, not in some companies uh, building there in these data centers, uh, and then we refer to them as a cloud. Uh, but uh, companies like uh, Google and uh, Amazon, they have these huge data centers. And so a lot of times when we, uh, when we need a computer for, uh, for some, some purpose, uh, we don't you know, go and buy one from the store. We go to uh, the cloud, uh, a company that has uh, computers in the cloud, and we rent them. And we say, okay, give us, give us a computer for for so much time with these specifications. And they say, okay, this is, it's going to cost you, you know, uh, so many rupees per month or per hour sometimes. And uh, so that's that's where most of the new computers are. They are all in the cloud. And we need people uh, who are cloud engineers. They know how to set up these pro these computers. They know how to uh, install the software on them. Um, so it's like it's like earlier on I talked to you about the uh, PC technician. Uh, this is like the other extreme of that because this uh, you know very readily uh, takes a lot more skill to to keep these things going. Uh, and the DevOps uh, engineers, uh, that is development and operations, they are the people who keep all these things running and keep all the software and these computers talking to each other. Uh, Again, technically very difficult area, I think, but uh, a lot in demand. Right? Uh, so more and more stuff is going on in the cloud. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, again, I think it's a very good area to get into. So uh, talk a little bit, uh, by the way, that list is, that I gave you is, you know, it's by no means complete, uh, but I think I've covered all the big, the, the, the big areas. Uh, now, uh, how do you decide on on your on a career, right? So here are some suggestions, right? Uh, one is you know you have to build up your basic IT skills. Uh, there's a free a lot of free online programming courses. Uh, I mentioned earlier uh, Code.org. I also mentioned KhanAcademy.org. Anybody with a computer or a smartphone can can access these things, right? Uh, and get a lot of a lot of knowledge this way. Uh, there are free computer science courses from MIT, uh, one of the best institutions uh, uh, in the world, uh, which you can go and take. Uh, it's free. Uh, we all learn a lot from our friends. Uh, we, uh, most of us learn to use computers from our friends. Uh, so don't underestimate that. There's so much that we can learn from people around us. 
of course you know at some point you need to go and you know do this at school you need to get a university and diploma courses and so on uh and then after that you know uh you can get uh, you know you can look for a job you can look for an internship uh by the way there's a website here i'll give a link to and it's called itcareerfinder.com and it maybe gives you a little bit more description about some of the different careers that i was talking about Okay, um, so um, I guess now is question time. Uh, by the way, my company has, uh, I think, one or two uh, open job openings. So if anybody's interested in a, uh, in a full-time job or internship, there's an email address over here. If you guys have questions about, uh, you know, which, which we don't answer today, feel free to drop me an email. I'll try to answer.